mama this dress. Oof, girl, what are you doing? What is going on with these queens and these flat wigs? You know my name, Neon Noir, Neon Noir, on my road to fame. I am that bitch, coming for your spot. Neon Noir, Neon Noir, now let me show you what I got. I got Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest pin in the box. If you're new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Drag Race Philippines, season three, episode two, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end, where I let you know who had my fab and drab of the week. This week, we are having a ball. That is right, we are getting a two looks for each queen. The first look is a Sari Sari, which technically is a variety store sort of look where the queens must bring an outfit from home made from elements that can be found at a variety shop. The second look is a look that they have to make in the workroom and present on the runway. So, without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, we have Angel, and Angel for her sorry sorry look is coming out with a look inspired by spoons. That is right, she's got this sculptural dress that is all made of individual spoons, and then she's got this sort of side hip that is made with plastic bags. She then paired it with this uh, red uh, long hair. Now, first up, I will say I really love this sculptural moment with the spoons. I like that the spoons don't necessarily feel like spoons or look like spoons, and it definitely feels like a sculpture on the body. I think that the, the, the plastic bag uh, train on the side is also really cool. Again, very textural, very organic in shape which really works but I actually wish it was a lot bigger because it definitely feels like an S not necessarily like a dress you know what I mean so I think that that would have really changed it up now the other thing that sort of bothers me is all the colors that are used I feel like the color is an explosion of colors I wish she would have toned it down just a little bit and maybe use like one or two colored uh, elements so then it would have felt a little bit more cohesive and a little bit more elegant the part that bothers me the most most about this outfit though is the hair. She has got this flat wig that is red and dried and I'm just like, girl, really? If you have this beautiful sort of sculptural dress, then why don't you put some beautiful sculptural hair that goes with it to really match the vibe? Ultimately, I do think this can use quite a few adjustments, but ultimately it's still a pretty like cool dress and very well constructed. And that is why she's getting a up. And for her trashing a runway look, Angel is coming out in this sort of little bikini with all of the trash stuck onto her. She's then paired it with this tall ponytail, these red thigh high boots, and these red gloves with all of the jewelry. Now, as she comes out, she is definitely giving you a vibe. I am definitely getting who this street walker is. And I love the little punch of red because it is really giving you that attitude that is needed. When you start looking at the outfit, the outfit is really much just a bathing suit with a bunch of trash look on it, but with her body, she can kind of get away with it. So she is definitely relying on pretty. But hey, if you look like that, why not, right? Now, I do like that she decided to go with big hair and tall boots because that really helped tie the whole look together. The one thing that I don't get is all of the jewelry. She went with like a lot of like really blingy bling jewelry and that's not the vibe I was getting from this. I felt like actually had she made some little jewelry out of trash, that would have been a little bit cooler because this feels a little bit more punk rock, not a little bit glam. This is a very middle of the road outfit and normally when it comes to middle of the road outfit, I'm quite critical, but somehow I kind of like the vibe she's giving and because I like the vibe she's giving I'm gonna go ahead and give her a soft bow. Next up, we have Tita Baby, and Tita Baby, for her sorry, sorry store look, is coming out in this pink dress with this pink hair, this pink fan, and these pink treats all over her dress. She said she is giving you the entire store, not just one element. First up, let's start with the positive. I really love this hair. She got the memo on if you're gonna do a dress that's a little bit interpretive and a little bit like DIY, then the hair must look good and the hair looks good. I also appreciate that she stuck to one color and did tone on tone on tone, which really helps tie everything together. But then we get into this dress and mama, this dress. 
Oof. This dress is a pink dress which she literally stuck a bunch of stuff to and the stuff that she stuck onto doesn't look elegant Doesn't look sophisticated. It doesn't look transformed in any single way It is literally just like tied around her waist and I'm thinking like really girl if it was me I think that actually she should have done the dress made out of these elements like taking the wrappers off and made the entire dress out of that and that would have been really cool but right now it is just a piece of fabric with some stuff on it all in all this is not good enough and gonna have to be a drag and for her trash and a runway look tita baby is coming out in this uh, baby blue bodysuit with a uh, blonde hair and all of the jewelry she clearly went to the same school of design that angel did they came to the table with the same idea Idea. Let's make a little bit of a bodysuit. Let's stick some stuff onto it. Let's pair it with a bunch of jewelry and let's see where we get. And honestly, it kind of works. I actually think this one works a little bit better than Angel's because actually the garbage bags or whatever material that she used are really like shaped to look like breasts and they kind of curve into the inside of her waist to make her feel a little bit thinner and give her a little bit more of that shape. Now, I think that this is really genius because she doesn't have the same body as someone like Angel. So you definitely need to create the illusion of where you have it now I do think that uh, with Tita baby the jewelry works a little bit better than it did with angel and I just think that that's because of like the aura that Tita gives Tita definitely gives that like old-school rich anti vibe and she's done that with the hair she's done that with the jewelry and then this outfit feels a little bit superhero-y but you know what I'll let it pass all in all I was kind of surprised that this is what Tita came out with because I wasn't expecting this for her and because I wasn't expecting it from her I liked it even more all in all I'm gonna go ahead and give her a soft bye <laughs> Next up is Yudapota, and Yudapota for her Sari Sari store look is coming out with this sort of a jacket made out of like rice paper. She then got this red piece underneath, which has got all of the rhinestones all over it. She's paired with red hair, a red collar, and some sunglasses. She goes on to explain that she is uh, representing the worker of a store where they are wearing their coats and the red represents blood because they put their blood sweat and tears into their job it's a stretch i think that i wouldn't have necessarily understood this outfit had she not explained it and even when she explained it i'm not sure i really believe it i think that the white jacket is pretty cool but i don't get the red with it and she added a couple of rhinestones to distract you from it i love you to on my last episode i gave her my top marks both runways but this time I was like, girl, what are you doing? I'm not sure about this one. I think that this must have been a last minute scramble because I cannot believe that this is what she really want to, to present. My guess, my interpretation. So don't shoot me if I'm wrong. That being said, I don't like it, I don't get it, and it's definitely gonna have to be a drab. And for her a trash and a runway look, a Yudipota is coming out in this a black and a red a number. She's got this like little top with this little base and this giant arm uh, structure coming on. She said that she's giving you a little bit of that monster vibe. Now, I don't know how she made all of this, but it's really cool. I love the texture, I love the color, I love the whole avant-garde of this this is totally not what i would be expecting from a you know four hour design challenge this definitely feels really elevated honestly this even feels better than some of the dresses that people brought from home that just goes to show you how good a ud pota is now the dress and the outfit is super great but we gotta talk about this styling yet again she's coming out with a flat wig girl what is wrong with you and flat wigs i think this would have looked so cool with a a really sculptural wig to sort of mimic this sculptural vibe that's coming on the arm then she's also decided to pair it with some sunglasses that she then just keeps on her head again no those sunglasses don't match they don't feel the vibe either if you're gonna put the sunglasses put them on your face to kind of give you like that cool girl vibe or actually think this would have been really cool had she even made a headpiece out of these numbers if she didn't have sculpted hair i think just like a headpiece that was a sort of like that would have really tied this all together so a little styling issues but a great outfit nonetheless and that is why i'm gonna go ahead and give her a bow. 
Next up, uh, we have Popstar Bench. And Popstar Bench uh, for her Sorry Sorry store look is coming out in this like blue corseted uh, top with this uh, green bottom and this giant uh, blue headpiece. She said that this dress is actually made out of straws in different colors and uh, textures. Now, the one thing I will say that is I didn't even realize it was made out of straws. I was actually staring at it, trying to figure out what material is this made out of. And I think that that's really cool. It just really goes to show the craft craftsmanship and the detailing that she actually put into it. I like the way that she lined up all of her little straws to kind of give you this pattern that really makes it feel like textures or maybe a little bit of a pinata, but like in a good way. I love this big piece at the top because it really gives you volume. And I really think that this outfit is really thought through. If I was to change a thing or two, I would have actually changed the sort of fabric it was made out of. She decided to use a base that was white. So when you actually look on the inside of her slit, it's all white. I wish she would have used green so that it would have been all green on the inside and matched the outside. Now the only thing about this dress is it's a very good dress like I said but it doesn't necessarily feel like something you brought from home. This is a very well constructed garment but a well constructed garment of something we've seen queens from previous seasons do. When you are making a dress at home especially a DIY dress I would have liked this to really be over the top and though she went over the top with the accessories I don't feel that the silhouette is particularly new or interesting that being said it is well made it is cool and I can't really falter for that and that is why she is getting a fab and for her trash in a runway look a pop star bench is coming out in this a silver number she's then paired it with a black boot a black gloves and black hair as she comes out I'm like oh great another bodysuit with a bunch of stuff stuck onto it now, girl, I am criticizing these bodysuits, but at the end of the day, if I was on a sewing challenge, that is exactly what I would be doing. But a pop star bench goes on to explain that her bodysuit is actually inspired by Lady Gaga's monster ball look. Now, I didn't immediately see that, but as soon as she said there, I was like, oh yeah, I make sense. I know the dress. I've been to the tour. So I totally got that. I think that the bodysuit is a bodysuit with stuff onto it it works it's nothing great but it's also nothing bad so i can't really criticize it that much honestly if i was on the show that's what i would be doing too so you know kudos to you mama i also like that she decided that she went with this sort of metallic body and this sort of like leather uh black gloves and boots because it kind of creates that contrast but also mimics the material in the same way i think it is a really cohesive unit now as she said that she is a lady gaga I was like, I really wish she would have put some sunglasses on. I think that would have really completed the look or actually just borrowed the sunglasses from Yuri Pota who just kept them on her head. Those sunglasses would have really matched this look. Then we get into this hair. What is it with people and flat hair? I do not enjoy this. I think that this could have been so much better with some really taller hair and maybe put some silver pieces into it. I think that would have really made this dress feel go from a little bit basic to a little bit more and zhuzhed it up just a little bit. All in all, it's a fine look and gonna get a fine grade of a soft fab. <laughs> Next up, it's Jay Quinn, and Jay Quinn for her Sorry Sorry store uh, look is coming out in this sort of a pink puffer jacket made out of all these little wrappers. She's then paired it with this white jumpsuit underneath, this big black hair with this little visor. First, uh, let's talk about this jacket. This is such a cool jacket. I love that it feels like a puffer jacket. It feels really edgy, but it is made out of these wrappers, so it kind of feels a little bit campy and a little bit of fun. This is exactly what I would want it to see. This is kind of what I was hoping someone like Tita Baby would have done. I also like that Jay Quinn decided to go with this really big hair because I think this really big hair not only proportionizes her really well, but also balances this giant coat. Then this jumpsuit underneath is a little bit plain for me. I totally get that she wanted to go with a plain silhouette because everything else is so big and colorful. So I think that the balance is quite nice, but I wish she would have done something more to it. For example, had this been all rhinestone, I think that could have been really cute. Or if there was a little bit more detailing because it just feels a little bit too plain. All in all though, I do like the vibe, I do like the look, and that is why I'm gonna go ahead and give her a pop. And for her trash and runway look, uh, Jay Quinn is coming out in this 
sort of a samurai inspired uh, look with these uh, tall shoulders and this uh, sort of dojo vibes of uh, feeling. She made this out of a uh, newspaper with sort of a Chinese uh, writing all over it. She then paired it with this uh, black hair, which is also really tall and sculptural, and she is definitely giving a vibe. I think this is really interesting and really well constructed. First off, it's not a bodysuit with a bunch of stuff stuck onto it. It definitely feels like it has shape. I'm going to assume she did quite a lot of cosplay, but if she didn't, then I'm going to say this is even better done than I thought. I also like that she decided to pair it with really crafted hair because I do think that the vibe really helps. And sometimes when you have a makeshift costume, pairing it with good hair really goes a long way. As she walks down the runway, she does trip a little bit because her heel breaks, but I also have to give her kudos for just continuing on as if nothing happened. I was like, yes, girl. Yes. All in all, I actually really love this look and I think it is well made and definitely gonna be a fun. Next up, we have Maxi, and Maxi for her Sorry Sorry store a look is coming out in this silver number. She's wearing this a silver dress with these sort of like frilly things coming off of her waist. She then paired it with this a giant silver headpiece and long blonde hair. She goes on to explain that this whole silver dress is made from bottle caps and bags of chips. I will say that I really appreciate Maxi went for it because in the first episode, she definitely went very simple and I criticized her quite a bit. If you want to watch that first episode, I'll leave the link below. But this one, she decided to go full on, and that is such a great change of pace, and I really, really appreciate it. Now, I like that these were bottle caps and chips, because I didn't really recognize them as bottle caps or chips, but it definitely gave you that idea of sequence on the runway, which really worked. Now, if I did have to change a couple of things, it would be actually two. The first is her makeup. I think that she decided to do a lot of silver in her makeup to kind of pick up on the silver on her dress. I don't think that that was needed. I think like just a really pretty mug would have went a long way to make it more of a, like this disco-y vibe. But you know what? I get why she did it. I just think it's a little bit much in my opinion. And the second thing is her undergarments. When she turns around, you see the bottom of her panty line and she did it in black. I wish that all of her undergarments were actually in silver so that it would have uh, blended a little bit more. But other than that, this dress is pretty great. And because it's pretty great, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a Ah. And for her trash and a runway look, Maxi is coming out in this sort of a little uh, dress with all of these uh, stripes put onto it, and she is giving you the full pop star fantasy. Now, when she came out with this dress, I was like, oh, this actually looks like fabric. It definitely feels like she took a lot of little pieces and put them together to make this little dress. Now, I say little dress because it is really teeny tiny, but what I do like that is that this dress has a vibe. And she did this also with all the accessories, with the red shoe, the big sort of Diana Ross hair, and the microphone to really give you that pop star fantasy. Now the dress is not that special, not that interesting, but when you are doing a design challenge, it is really hard just in general because most people just like stick stuff onto a bustier. And this doesn't feel like that. This feels like there was some construction put into it and bought from the store. Granted, maybe not an expensive store, but a store nonetheless. And that is a compliment when it comes to a design challenge. And I like that it feels like a whole story. This feels like a 60s pop star. All in all, I was quite impressed and this really tickled my fancy. And that's why she's getting a pop. Next up, we have John Fedeliaga, and John is coming out wearing this yellow and green dress made out of straws and bottle caps. She said that she is giving you a little bit of scarecrow or scare straw. I personally didn't see scarecrow, but when she said it, I was like, maybe. I think she was a little bit stretching with this description, maybe because she didn't know how to describe this. But how I would describe it is genius. I love this dress. When they gave this theme and they said that they had to actually bring a dress from home in unconventional materials, I was like, what are people going to do that is so over the top, so original? And with some of the first looks, I was kind of a little bit like, 
disappointed. Not in a bad way, but I was just expecting so much more. So when this turned the corner, it was a so much more I was waiting for. I love how the straws were integrated. You can definitely see there's a lot of thought put into it. I like that there's only two colors and not like a mixtures of color. I like that it feels sculpture, but it also feels fashion because all of these straws make this really interesting shaped gown. It doesn't feel like just a simple gown and it definitely feels like it's made from it. It looks like ruffles. It looks like lines. It looks like ribs. It looks really, really good. All in all, this is perfection and definitely gonna be yay. Ah! And for our trash and fashion runway look, John Fedelaga is coming out in this sort of a fringe a dress with this a tall ponytail and these black uh, boots. She comes on to explain that she is a social climber and that is why she's giving this dress. Again, I think that this story is not the best. John is not the best at explaining their outfits, but the dress is perfectly fine. Now it's not memorable, but I don't necessarily think it's bad. It's up there with the angels of the world. So it is perfectly fine. Now I do like the fringe that is coming off the front. I like that how much a fringe there is because there's a lot of a movement to it. Uh, but I don't really like these purple hip pads. I wish that she would have just lost these all together and maybe made this fringe front a little bit longer to kind of give you that little like, you know, dancer uh, vibe. I think that that would have been more of the vibe I would have went with. I would have said, oh, I am a little bit Latin dancer and with this little fringe dress. That being said, it's perfectly okay. Not my favorite, not the worst, nothing that's going to be memorable, but also not bad either. And that's why I'm going to go ahead and give her a soft bow. Next up, we have Zimba Ding, and Zimba Ding for her Sorry Sorry store uh, look is coming out wearing this pink on pink uh, dress with this light pink base with this pink detailing. She's then got a skirt made out of pink candies and other items. She then done it with blonde hair with curlers in her hair. She goes on to explain that she's actually representing her mother because her mother owned a Sari Sari store and therefore uh, she is her mother all in pink. Now I love this look. I feel like this is what Tita Baby tried to do and Tita Baby failed to do. This both feels like an interpretation of a Sari Sari store but bringing a concept to it. The fact that she brought this mother character to it I think really works because the hair kind of matches the campiness of this dress but this dress also feels very structural and the pieces of the sort of store candy uh, chips bag thing really feel integrated where you can see them as individual but they do feel part of the dress they don't just feel sticked on I also like that it was all one color she did go with blonde hair but because of the pink curlers it also matches from head to toe. I think this is very well conceptualized and very well put together. All the little details are there and that is why she is getting a bye. And for her fashion trash and a look, Zimbia Ding is coming out in this red dress that is really sculpture with all of these hoops that is made out of discount signs. 20% discount, 30% discount, 100% discount. The thing is, she definitely does not look like a discount queen. She uh, said that she's uh, trying to represent a ribbon. Now I kind of get a little bit of the ribbon, but I actually just get sculptural and actually, can I say, a little bit avant-garde. I am shocked that this is a dress that is coming out of a challenge because it is because it feels so crafted. If you told me that they brought this from home, I would have believed you because this dress is a lot better than a lot of the other queens' dresses that they brought from home. I also like the way she's paired this. She's paired this with really like proper hair and jewelry to kind of like elevate this look to give you a little bit of that like lady in red a fantasy. All in all, this is excellent and definitely going to be a pop. Next up, oh, we have Kiana, and Kiana for her Sorry Sorry Store a look is coming out in this a red sort of a devil inspired a look. She's got these red horns on her breast. She's got this like little red and black mohawk, and she's wearing red and orange a jumpsuit with a red and orange a frilly bottom. She goes on to explain that she is representing a spicy food with her favorite spicy snacks, and I really love this. I love that she took one specific snack, which was a spicy snack, 
and riffed on it and gave us like this devil inspired look because devil fire fire spicy I got it immediately and I think that that is really conceptual and really great I love this bodice this bodice is all made out of like these spicy chip bags and it feels really integrated it feels like a lot of time and work went into it I love these horns they're so over the top and so camp and definitely give you that like aha moment that you need I also like that she went with a mohawk and didn't try to make it pretty pretty she said you know what I'm going character and I'm gonna go full on on this and that is exactly what we need now the one thing that I would probably change is uh, the base here she decided to go with pants with sort of frilly things at the bottom of her pants I wish this was a skirt I think it would have looked a really good with a skirt and still kept like the frilly things at the bottom and I actually wish she would have continued the same texture that was at the top of the bodice at the bottom as well I think that maybe because she went with pants she had to use fabric because pants are really hard at the end of the day and so you're gonna need the best material to do that with and so I think that that's why she probably went in that direction however I think a dress would have gone a long way to give it more of like a she double look ultimately though this is still an excellent look and that is why she is getting a fuck and for her fashion trash and a look a Kiana is coming out in this a brown and white dress made out of cardboard and shipping material such as bubble wrap and I don't know what else is in there she then paired it with a long blonde hair she said that she is giving you the full air mail of fantasy she is the packaging I find this look very interesting she didn't decide to transform the material but actually use it in her favor and kind of turn it into this little bit of camp dress because she said you know what if I can't change the material let me work with it and let me build a storyline with it and that is exactly what she did yes she's got cardboard but then she's used bubble wrap and then that material immediately makes you think of shipping and then she cut out all of these shapes to really emphasize this story she said I am the full shipping label and I kind of love when double someone doubles down and puts their stamp on it and says I am changing I am doing this I am making this work I think that the dress itself underneath the shape she was able to create with just this bubble wrap is really cool and then she got these sculptural moments with this cardboard maybe I'm reading into it too much but maybe I'm just liking it a little bit too much I sound like a broken record here but mama this hair what is going on with these queens and these flat wigs this is a no again I wish she would have went with a little bit of a quafted piece on top and then maybe stuck in some bubble wrap or a little cardboard in there to really bring this all the way up I think that would have done really well that being said, I still think this is quite fun, quite unique, and definitely going to be a oh. Next up, it's a Versex, and Versex for her sorry, sorry store a look is coming out in this little black uh, dress with all of these uh, sort of phone and phone cases attached to her. She's then paired it with a blue boots, a blue wig, and some crazy eyed uh, contacts. Uh, she's giving you a little bit of that cyber goth uh, fantasy, but a little bit of that fashion a uh, girl uh, vibe. I clearly see where she was going with it. I love the makeup. I love the hair. It really tells like this e-girl sort of a story that matches with the phones. That being said, I don't really like the phone dress. This phone dress really does feel like a dress with some phone stuck to it. I also flash back to the Polaroid dress that uh, Simone did on her season and that feels like a well-constructed version while this feels like a interpretation and a butcherized version of it. I think that she had good intention, but it just didn't work out. And that's a shame because she is quite unique in her approach and in the material she used. Unfortunately, this one is gonna have to be a drop. And for her fashion trash and a look, Versex is coming out in this skirt and bra combo made out of CDs. Now, first off, I will say that I'm glad this is not another bodysuit because we've seen enough of those, but it is very little clothing. It is just a bra and a skirt. But I do also like that she decided to go with CDs because that does give you a little bit of a different texture. Now Versex says that she is the fashion queen but sometimes she's hitting and sometimes she's missing. I feel like Versex has like this one silhouette which is like this sexy cool girl and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. 
This is one that kind of works a little bit and kind of works not so little bit. I think that the idea is cool. I like that she went with a different silhouette, which is different than everybody else. So I gotta give her points for that. When it comes to the CDs, I wish she would have used just the back sides of the CD because then it would have made this whole holographic moment. And right now it definitely feels a little bit DIY because there's some that are facing forward, some that are facing back and there's no like rhyme or reason to it. Then I wish she, if she had done that, she would have done some accessories in silver like a silver shoe and maybe some of like their silver jewelry to give you a little bit of that edgier vibe all in all this is not my favorite but it's also not the worst so I'm gonna go ahead and give her a soft bath Next up, we have Minx Chanel. And Minx Chanel, uh, for her Sorry Sorry store uh, look, is coming out in this light green and dark green superhero number. She's got a bodysuit with some gloves, with some high boots, and this headpiece with big blonde hair. She goes on to explain that this is made out of plastic bottles. Now, as soon as she said plastic bottles, my mind went to Mountain Dew. And maybe she did want to say Mountain Dew, but she definitely didn't say it in the runway, but I think it might be because of a copyright infringement or because they're not sponsoring the show. But I got Mountain Dew from it right away. I don't know what Mountain Dew has to do with a superhero. So maybe it is another liquid, maybe something that is a little bit more local. And if it is, can you let me know in the comments below? But I really like this look. This look feels very superhero-esque, very well put together, very craftsman, very artful, and very purposeful. And it's for those reasons, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a Wow. And for her fashion trash and look, a mix Chanel is coming out with this sort of a black top with this a red and orange into it. She's paired it with this skirt with this tall black hair in a ponytail. She said that she is giving you the villain to her superhero in her first look. I love the contrast of a villain and superhero. I love the contrast of bright and dark. So I like that she put a theme to it, which is more than a lot of other queens did. Now the dress itself is a little bit hodgepodgey, but let's face it, a lot of queens did a little bit of a hodgepodgey job. But I do appreciate that she didn't go with a bodysuit and she did go with a little bit of a different silhouette and she added some sculptural moments to it. But more importantly than that, I like the vibe that she's giving. When it comes to it, when it comes to these design challenges, sometimes it's not about how well you do it, but what you're presenting. And she's presenting a great vibe. I also like the style with the boots and the actually, you know, styled hair. I mean, who knew you can have a styled wig? So I think this really helped her whole look come together. All in all, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a five. And that is it for this uh, runway. Now, when they said ball, I was expecting three looks and not two. I really wish they would have done three looks. I like when the ball is three looks because we get two from home and one that's constructed. So we do really get to see a variety of uh, looks, especially so early on into the season, we like to get to know the queens a little bit better. Also, when you do a ball, I wish that they would have let the first category be a little bit looser and not like unconventional and unconventional because I do like to see the juxtaposition and this definitely feels like one same theme done over and over again because some of the construction look in the second one felt just as good as the first one. It just wasn't enough to really give me a whole thing. So for my ball challenge, this wasn't my favorite. But enough about that, let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. My drab of the week for the Sorry Sorry Variety Show us look goes to. Oh. A baby. And for the uh, fashion trash and look, it goes to Angel. Oh. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week for the sorry, sorry store look goes to Jonathan Laga. And for the runway, I am going to go ahead and give it to Zinvia Ding. Now, girl, do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, let me know in the comments below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, can you go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button? I am dropping new episodes every week, and I would really appreciate your support. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye. -bye.